will go away by next session. We've got, we're on our way to integrating hemp products into cannabis retail sometime in the not too distant future. We, we have gotten the state of California's Department of Public Health to take over regulating a substance that the FDA says is prohibited. This will compel FDA to take action sooner than later, get off their asses and get something done. Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome back to the Miracle Plant Podcast, where we discuss this miracle plant with so many names and how it helps people in so many extraordinary ways. Well, today is Hemp Hemp Hooray, three years in the making. The AB45 bill in California passed. It's taken on many different number names, many different iterations, different governors, um, all kinds of negotiations and pushback and interest groups. And it's just been uh, the, a roller coaster that would make Magic Mountain out here in California blush. And uh, I'm just so happy to report this week that it made it through all of the Congress Assembly and it has been passed officially through the state Congress and now uh, rests on the governor's desk for his John Hancock. And uh, it is officially law. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. There's been a lot of confusion about what this bill represents. Um, in general, CBD, hemp, and cannabis are uh, confusing topics for many uh, Americans. And so, but we'll we'll focus today on AB45, and uh, you know, just give you a little backstory. So, in, in 2018, the Farm Bill passed, and when the Farm Bill passed uh, in December of 2018, it made it explicitly clear that hemp-derived cannabinoids, and hemp defined as anything with less than 0.3 THC, was a legal agricultural crop, and uh, anything that came from that crop, that crop was also legal. And when that signed into law, uh, we um, it was legal, and we had a huge party then, and we're having a party now. Um, but it, it wasn't just that; it was, um, you know, the the end of the race. And in many ways, it was the beginning of the race. And um, there was obviously a huge boom in in CBD and hemp and all of that, that came from the passing of the Farm Bill in 2018. Well, what happened next was the California uh, Health Department, Public Health, came out with an FAQ saying that um, hemp or CBD was not to be allowed in food. Um, it wasn't to be allowed in, um, you know, edibles, if you will. It wasn't to be allowed in uh, products on the shelves of California. And so right about that time, um, there was the formation of the California Hemp Council. And, uh, um, you know, it, it basically, we, we knew we needed to put together uh, a hemp council to, to, you know, make sure that the laws were being represented by the hemp industry and they were being represented by the farmers and they were being represented, basically representing the plant. And, uh, you know, when, when that frequently asked question came out from the California Public Health Department, um, that was really when we kind of rolled up our sleeves and got to work. And like I said before, there were many different iterations of this bill, um, many different um, uh, meetings and, and meetings with the governor's office and meeting with different um, parties and, and just, you know, meeting with different interest groups and um it was all really, you know, the main point of the bill was to 
explicitly make it clear that CBD is legal in the state of California to be sold in food and beverages. Um, and because it took us three years to pass this bill, many companies and industries, um, it definitely had a chilling effect. So the exciting news is that this week it did pass. We do have a legal um, roadmap, if you will, if you want to manufacture CBD products in the state of California, uh, there's going to be a legal path for you to do such a thing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of companies, myself included, um, that have been waiting on the sidelines so we could understand what exactly is, what are the rules and what, it, what needs to be on the label. Like every state has a different, some different labels. Uh, the requirements that they have. And some states don't want any THC. There's a few of them out there that have passed individual state laws on that. So when this bill passes, for those of us that are located in California or operate in California, we can have very simple, clear cut understanding of what we're supposed to do if we're going to make um, products with CBD in them. The other thing that this simply does is there were um, agencies to the California Health Department which my sources tell me clearly that it was um, backed by GW Pharma and seeing if they could use the FDA to reach out and um, enact some type of agency to um, uh, ensure that their patent of CBD through GW Pharma Epidiolex was in violation. And so they started taking CBD products off the shelf. Those that were labeled CBD, those that were made from CBD isolate um, that, that uh, GW Pharma believed was in violation of their patent. And so literally all over California, products were taken off shelves. And, you know, just imagine that to this day, I still see the rever reverberating effects. I mean, I, I work with Bristol farms and, and they're still gun shy about, um, you know, what they should do, uh, what they can sell. And so again, the passing of AB 45 makes it clear as morning dew that you can sell in the state of California, CBD products in the retail stores, food, beverage, cosmetics, and pet products. So that's what we're here to discuss. That's what we're here to talk about and celebrate this three-year journey that has gotten us to where we are. There's been some, you know, like I said, many different iterations of this bill. Uh, but the good news is it's sitting on the governor's desk awaiting his John Hancock, uh, which we should have any day now. And uh, just... So excited that we finally have a clear path to really allow the hemp and the CBD space in California to just blow the roof off. So that's what we're talking about today. And uh, happy to see we have uh, Dan here with us, our co-host, and Latara, who uh, is joining us and has a wedding coming up real soon. And so just happy to be here. And anybody in the audience, if you have any questions, we are recording live here. This is the Miracle Plant Podcast. Um, just raise your hand if you have any questions about AB 45 or California hemp CBD. Uh, but the bill has passed through the state Congress and, uh, we're just awaiting a signature from, uh, Governor Newsom and, uh, we are, it's, uh, all systems go and ready for liftoff to just blow the doors off of this CBD industry. So, uh, again, my name's Justin Benton. So happy to be here. Uh, the host of the Miracle Plant podcast. And uh, just uh, it really is a momentous occasion, uh, three years in the making, uh, and some might even say it's 85 years in the making uh, when you factor in the 1937 marijuana tax bill that made uh, it illegal, essentially, to grow hemp in all states, uh, including California. And so it's just a, a huge day for California, uh, and it's a huge day for the plant because it just makes it very clear um, what is legal. Many, many, many other states have already passed similar hemp CBD bills. Um, you know, again, this comes in part because, uh, as we know, the FDA is dragging their feet <laughs> to weigh in on CBD. And um, there are many reasons for that. And we can save that for another show. But without clear guidance from uh, the federal agencies, uh, it has left it up to the states to decide how they want to interpret, how they want to enforce, how they want to regulate their CBD and hemp, um, you know, um, products.
because of the passing of the 2018 Farm Bill. So happy to open it up to any questions. And, and I know, Dan, you've been around a long time and you've seen a lot of things and you host, uh, you know, podcasters and many other uh, produce many, many, many um, cannabis and hemp related uh, podcasts. And uh, what's uh, what's been your uh, initial thoughts or what have you seen out there in Colorado and, and, and kind of watching all of this transpire out here in California? Well, first off, it's you got to give congratulations to the people that were that spearheaded this. I know we we talked about Patrick Goggins and but it's a lot. There was a the huge community came together to pull this thing, like you said, three year three year odyssey, maybe eighty seven year odyssey. But that's the first and foremost is a huge congratulation goes out to everyone. And, and I know everyone isn't completely happy with every aspect of this, but it's progress. I mean, I think that's the that's the the general overview of this is we're making progress every day. Something like this happens, and it sends a message. I mean, if what California does, the rest of the country usually follows. So that's a really good sign. And, and I think dovetailing, dovetailing off of that is all the opportunity that's going to flood into the state of California. Just in, for instance, investors. I know so many investors that are on the sidelines because they just weren't sure what, where this was going. And now for companies like yours, you're going to have a lot of people knocking on your door because they're going to be like, hey, now we want to get in now. And it gives everybody an opportunity to really, you know, do what we should be doing. If you were in other industry, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't have your hands tied. You'd be able to go ahead and do these things that now you're able to do. So a couple things, your congratulations to everybody involved and <laughs> look out. There's going to be a lot of exciting things happening in the state of California. Heck yeah, brother. Uh, I'm super, super excited. And, um, it's uh, it, it's been a long road, and we've gotten this bill close to the finish line in many different iterations, many different names of the bill, uh, two or three times. Uh, I mean, right to the finish line, and it didn't pass. Um, like you said, there was there's a lot of competing interests uh, when it comes to CBD and hemp, right? So let's just let's just call it how it is, right? Uh, there's this thing called, I don't know if you've heard of it, big pharma. <laughs> and they, uh, they, uh, you know, they're, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of great scientists and researchers that have all the best intentions and went to MIT and did all the things to, to, to cure cancer and do all the things that they idealistically believed that they were doing. Um, unfortunately, um, in the movie uh, Wall Street with Michael Douglas, greed is good. Uh, I think we can all kind of argue on the opposite side of that. Uh, it's, they're publicly traded multinational companies that answer to boardrooms and stockholders. And um, decisions are made based on uh, a ticker, um, a quarterly report, profits and losses. And unfortunately, when we're talking about people's health, those two um don't always land on the same page. And uh, what this miracle plant can do is help our bodies find homeostasis or balance, just like eating right, drinking lots of water, exercising, being mindful, and getting a good night's sleep. These are all things that uh, contribute to your body being in balance. Our bodies are amazing. Probably the most amazing organism um, on the planet at, at just self-regulating and finding balance and getting rid of toxins and dealing with pollutants. But as we all know, right now, we live in this extremely polluted um, world. Those of us, for the most part, who live in urban areas, um, you know, in the United States that I can speak on. And uh, you would think the, ur the rural areas would be better, but unfortunately, from the early 1900s, uh, we've just laid down so much pesticides and heavy metals that even that's not the case anymore. So with all of those pollutants, all of that refined sugar, all of the, uh, just the trash, you know, you need a master's degree to read the ingredients or pronounce the ingredients on our, our food. And, uh, our bodies can only take so much. And, um, so as we've all seen, there is billions upon trillions with a T uh, dollars of income 
revenue to be made off people who are sick, whether that is cancer or whether it is anxiety or whether it is pain or sleep. We've all heard of these new diseases that have names that many might not know what they mean or how certainly how to spell them, like fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, neuropathy, autoimmune diseases. And obviously for me, I got into this space because um, I was looking for a cure to my son's autoimmune disease that he <clears throat> developed that um, is called autism. And he was, you know, a healthy, happy boy. We were playing catch in the backyard and walking and talking and doing all the things that a two and a half year old starts to do. And uh, then we lost everything, uh, all the language and all the communication and the engagement. And he basically went into a coma mentally. And so in our search for a solution to heal our son, help him recover and his body, you know, we did the, the research and found, you know, all these toxins and pesticides and heavy metals. He was ranking in the 99th percentile. I mean, there couldn't, his body was just basically full of all these pollutants and he couldn't flush them out on his own. And so with diet and nutrition, uh, we made, we made a lot of progress, but when we found this plant, um, in our research, um, and then when we discovered that when you, when you make it in a raw form, like juicing of the plant, uh, to the tune of Dr. Raphael Mishulam, who uh, is basically the godfather of cannabis from his research in the 1960s, and he's still with us, God bless him, um, proved that CBDA, or the raw version of CBD, the, the raw plant, is 1,000 times more effective than CBD. And that's in, the study was published, and we just put a blog on it on our website at 101cbd.org for you to read. Uh, well, and that was published uh, for nausea and anxiety is what they were focused on for that research. So obviously our prayers were answered and we couldn't have asked for anything more. We set up a little shop, uh, 101cbd.org, so to kind of get the word out about our story and offer it to other autistic families or those uh, you know, families affected by folks on and kiddos on the spectrum. And then that's when all of the people started to find us, whether it was neuropathy, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer. And I saw incredible results. I saw incredible stories firsthand. And so that's when... Um, we went all in and decided to go on a mission to heal the world and reach a billion people by 2025, be it by education, be it by access to products, uh, free hemp seeds to grow in your backyard and teach people how to do such a thing. And the reason I bring that up is this plant can do so much to help our bodies find that homeostasis is that we are a threat. This plant is a threat to um, the status quo. And so those that have, um, that are on top of the hill and are making, uh, trillions with a T of dollars off of people who are sick, whether it be pain, anxiety, sleep, or any one of the other conditions that I named, um, it, it's a threat. And so those types of industries and those types of companies are going to push back. Um, and right now, the way they push back is that, uh, you know, FDA is really set up to regulate billion dollar companies to make sure that they have single molecules that pass certain controlled studies that check all the science boxes that can then be marketed to on television and prescribed by your doctor to fix everything. And right. That's the system that we're in, in the United States. And so when CBD was passed in 2018 in the farm bill, it was, you know, I don't think, um, I don't think big pharma knew how quickly it would catch fire. They certainly knew how powerful it was because they already had patents. In fact, the U S government has had patents on the, some of the cannabinoids like CBD. So, uh, when it caught, fire, that's when the people that the, the powers uh, that be were able to kind of pump the brakes. That's why we haven't seen the FDA pass. <laughs> we haven't seen the FDA pass anything 
in as far as regulating CBD. Uh, you know, just a month ago, they turned down uh, the the applications for full spectrum hemp, full spectrum CBD, to be marketed and distributed and sold as a uh, dietary supplement. And do you want to know the reason why they said the FDA that it wasn't uh, that why the application was denied? The reason was, and this is directly from their statement, is that because CBD was released as a pharmaceutical in the form of Epidiolex, which is to treat children with epilepsy and seizures, that costs $32,500 a year to be on. The reason why the dietary supplement application was denied for full spectrum CBD was because Epidiolex had already released CBD in the isolated form. Therefore, no dietary supplement can be released after a product has already been released as a pharmaceutical. Oh, I bet the lawyers are just sitting back laughing, smoking their cigars and drinking their brandy to that one. So, yes, we are in a fight. And the great news is that we do have things like podcasts, like the Miracle Plant podcast, where we can just have discussions. We do have Clubhouse, where we can just talk, listen, educate, collaborate, and you know, come together to share the information that we know. Part of also the pushback is that the FDA regulates, they're the marketing police. And those of us that have been in the supplements and health food game for a while, um, you know all the games and the things that that they don't want. You can't put anxiety on a website. You can't put stress or sleep or insomnia in a marketing ad because that conflicts with the interests of the billion dollar companies who run the programs through the FDA. And that's how we're set up currently. So to me, there's no surprise that the FDA has not regulated CBD and which has left it to the states, which is why this glorious Saturday morning that in California, AB 45 has passed and made it explicitly clear that CBD, which was already said to be legal federally, but then the California Health Department, through um, push and pressure from the FDA, which was through GW Pharma trying to enforce their patent on their Epidiolex, of $32,500, which is only 39% effective based on studies because of all the fillers and the synthetic crap that they throw in there. Um, now, with that frequently asked questions being out there three years later, we have passed the bill to put that to sleep. Because we have great attorneys, because we have great lobbyists, because we have great people that are here to represent this plant, because this plant has done so much for people and their families, the good will prevail. The evil will come and be seen for what it is. And those that are just here for profit and those that are just here to make money off the sick will be under more scrutiny and the spotlights will be on them. And we already know, all right, we've taken the red pill in the Matrix. We've taken the red pill in, you know, Alice in Wonderland. We already know. Those of us already know. So many people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're tired of the side effects. They tried everything that their doctor could possibly prescribe to them. Instead of, hey doc, why don't we talk about what people are eating and drinking? Why don't we start not with the symptom, but the problem? We're trying to clean up a sewage in a, in a river uh, 500 miles downstream. The problem is the sewage is 500 miles upstream and we need to clean up the sewage. And the sewage is the stuff that we eat and drink and breathe. And this plant is exactly like that red pill. When you take this plant juice or this plant oil and it helps you with your pain, anxiety or sleep or other serious health ailment, it's like Pandora's box has been opened. You now... No, wait a second. There's no side effects. I feel great. My skin looks better. What else can I do? And that's when it really happens. It's like, I'm going to go back to Mother Nature because Mother Nature knows best. Mother Nature's been here longer, longest. 
And when we start to make better choices that are in line with this planet, not only for ourselves and the environment, then we start to live a healthier and more holistic life. So anyways, I went on a bit of a tangent there, but of course, I'm just uh, so fired up about AB45 and, uh, you know, just an absolute advocate for this plant. And speaking of which, we have, we're honored to be here. Um, the man, the myth, the legend. I know he's a humble guy, so he doesn't like to take too much credit. But Patrick Goggin is the, is the lead uh, general counsel for the California Hemp Council. And he has, he was there every step of the way, brother. I'm so happy to have you here. And uh, congratulations for all of us in the hemp industry, especially in California. Hemp, hemp, hooray. What's going on, Patrick? Hey, good morning, Justin. Just, uh, just relaxing a little bit, man. It's been a, it's been a long, a long road, and and I can say that on on Thursday morning, I was I was talking with uh, a journalist about the P, about the bill, and um, you know, all I was hearing was negativity. All I was hearing was uh, about the opposition. I felt downcast i felt as though you know we were we were headed to another uh you know end run um and that we we're gonna go have to go back next session and then and, and it was almost as if i needed to let go um and and i and i shared that and i said you know what what will happen will happen you know the if the naysayers have their day so be it you know we'll 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 we'll, we'll see what we do but lo and behold later in the day we got a 29 to 2 vote in the senate the next day we got a 56 to 3 vote in the assembly and and I was floored and so yeah it's 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 a it's a good day the sun's shining up here in San Francisco and we are one small step uh, to full regulation in the state of hemp manufacturing together with one of the most, if not the most progressive hemp legislation in the state that will influence the FDA and other states in adopting these types of regulations. And if folks get on and, and, and start out, out there and start talking about, um, you know, start trashing the bill about what it's doing, suggest they go read the bill. Because when 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 it comes down to it, they, they talk a bunch of trash, but they but they don't have their facts straight. So folks need to get their facts straight. The news is it's good news. It's not bad news. We we actually got rid of a, a smokable hemp prohibition um, that will while it's temp there is a temporary one in place. It will go away by next session. Um, we've got we're on our way to integrating hemp products into cannabis retail. Um, sometime in the not too distant future. We, we have gotten the state of California's Department of Public Health to take over regulating a substance that the FDA says is prohibited. This will compel FDA to take action sooner than later, get off their asses and get something done. Love it, brother, love the passion, man. And I'm just so happy that you know our paths crossed uh, many moons ago and i remember uh, i was interviewing you for a little documentary i was doing at, at anoco and you know the advocacy that you've done for this plant especially in the state of california and all over the world uh is is, is second to none but i remember asking you in that interview that uh, that first interview that we did i said you know patrick what can we do what what can i do what can we do how can we help you know, just get the word out and help get this this plant uh, everywhere. And you said uh, we're forming the California Hemp Council. Come on board. Let's 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 get this thing right. And because of that, because of you know the California Hemp Council working to combat the FDA and the California Public Health that came out with those FAQs. That's the thing here. And like you said, we're all on the same team, hempsters. I mean, and hashtag hemp and ain't easy but we're all on the same team. And that's the part that for those naysayers out there, hey man, come to the party, let's negotiate, let's talk. And at the very least, like you said, read the bill. Don't get your, get out there to try and get your name in the headlines. Don't get out there because you love the sound of your own voice. Talk to an actual expert like Patrick or actually talk directly to um, the Congress or the governor's office 
and engage with what's really going on. And if, if there are certain things that are important to you, great. There are certain things that are important to each of us individually and those that are in businesses. It's a very complex issue with many different people pushing back. But all of us hamsters need to get on the same page. You know what I mean? So I'm just so um, thankful for what you've done, Patrick, and California Hemp Council, that we have a bill that is going to open up this industry, that is going to not have the chilling effects of, of products being taken off shelves, of confusion if it's legal or not. Um, I know myself personally. I am all systems go. There's a, a, lots of product lines that I've been waiting to pursue and, and start the process in because I simply didn't know what we should put on the bottle. I didn't know what, what boxes need to be checked as far as, uh, you know, what was going to satisfy California Public Health Department. And now that we have this bill awaiting Governor Newsom's signature here, um, it's just a glorious day. To me, it reminds me of the day in December when the, when the, the, the Farm Bill of 2018 passed. And uh, I, I have this optimistic view of everything, but I have this feeling that we're going to have another spike similar to what happened when the Farm Bill passed nationwide. We, I, I feel we'll feel that in California uh, with this bill as well. We're, we're, we're going to see we're going to see a great resurgence. Um, 2022 will be the comeback for hemp, I, I predict. Um, and then and, and it's going to help pave the way for for the next generation of advocacy on the industrial side. And you know, pushing incentives, pushing pushing uh, tax breaks for for corporations to to finally install and 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 and, and implement capital uh, infrastructure investment on the industrial side of the plant. That's that's what we're getting to, which is the holy grail, which will ultimately contribute in in in, in at, at a next level in terms of what's going on in the planet and, and what we're trying to do to, to institute sustainable practices, regenerative practices in the, in the, in the, both the state, the country, in the world. We've got to lead. I want to give a shout out to uh, the U.S. Hemp Roundtable. You know, the U.S. Hemp Roundtable, um, they, they were there from the beginning, carrying the water on this and their commitments and, 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 uh, consistency and, and sticking through uh, was, was incredible. Um, the CCIA stuck, out, stuck their heads out uh, in the face of a lot of cannabis opposition and stood their ground all the way to the end. Companies like Caliva, Canopy, uh, you know, I'm talking about folks outside of um, the CHC. This was a massive coalition. This was, a, this was landmark legislation. Mark the date when Governor Newsom signs this bill. It will be the moment that we saw a beginning of the change of the tides. Love it, brother. I got goosebumps, man. I'm so stoked. I just, uh, I love that we've come to this point. I don't think anybody can, can, can fully understand the, the ups and the downs and the, and, and the, the sleepless nights and the phone calls and the meetings and the travel and everything else as much as you. And the shots and, across uh, the bow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you certainly, you certainly got them, which is, it, it's, I understand shots across the bow from trillion dollar uh, industries and, uh, you know, establishment that see that this is a threat to their uh, status quo, but shots across the bow within the same industry is uh, uncalled for uneducated. You need to read up. And you need to um, make sure that you got your facts. Here's what, here's what I want to do, Justin. I want I I I, I appreciate um, uh, difference of opinions. I, I I'm down with that. So what what I want to call out uh, for is for Eddie Bernanke and and myself to on neutral ground invite anybody anybody who wants it from the hemp industry or anywhere who wants to debate AB four. AB 45. They can read it and they can debate it with us. Let's do it. Let's, let's educate folks and perhaps educate the, the opposition that, that wants to attack us so vigorously. Well, I certainly welcome the challenge and I would love to, um, I would love to host it. I would love to give you the platform. Uh, maybe we can do it in a week or two. And I know that there's, there are certainly some rumblings out there 
but and, and I can't wait for that to happen. And the things that I find are so impressive is because I've been in the know and because, you know, working with California Hemp Council and, and you know, learning from you and, and, and directly having access to the real information, we know some of the crap that they tried to put in this bill. I mean, some of the red herrings and some of the, the lost leaders for uh, the restrictions that they wanted to have were, were would have would have would have put a noose around the neck of this industry. I mean, there was some talk of that you, the, the products couldn't leave the state. I mean, or no, 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 or, or that the, the, they couldn't come into the state. Yeah, I mean, no, 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 it's no. It's true. It's true. I mean, look, there was so there were there were a ton of poison pills. We got rid of them. We even dealt with the most controversial issues. We found a middle path. Legislate the legislative process in California is a sausage making process. You cannot get out of the legislature without pissing off a lot of people and who are on the supply the side of support. But we have to see the big picture. We have to look at what we're what we're trying to overcome. We've been faced with. The, you know, the longest prohibition period, the most confusing propaganda ridden campaign. And that's what we're striving to overcome. We're moving mountains. We are literally moving mountains. We've been moving them in Washington, D.C. We're moving them in California. And we do not, when, when you move mountains, you don't get perfection. You get landslides. You get you get wa rivers overflowing. You get avalanches. And that happens and you deal with it. And you strive on, and you, you endure, and you, you get stronger. I've been through um, so many failures, so many setbacks, so many deaths. But you got to get back on the fucking horse. You got to see the. You got to continue to see the light and, and, and maintain the opposition. You can't let defeat defeat you. You got to overcome it. And, and these stories are stories of prevailing and, and, and coming back when, when defeat was in the, in, in the grasp of the opponents. Or of us. The victory was in their grasp. Sorry about that. Absolutely. No, no. I mean, we shall overcome, man. It, it, I know it's been uh, – it, it is landmark legislation. And so many people that it's – you know, what do they say? They've never – They've never built a statue for a critic, right? And, and when you're in the fire and when you're taking the body blows and you're throwing the uppercuts and you're getting the sleepless nights and you're getting the harassing phone calls and you're, 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 you know, your, your way of life is interrupted and, and all you're trying to do is the right thing and you're representing the plant and you have the best interests and you're in that sausage making process. And uh, for those that are not in the process, you know, there's a mute button on your phone. Uh, use it. Other than that, get involved. Get in the fight. Be a part of the solution. Don't be a part of the problem because we are here. This bill, it took what it, it took a miraculous effort to get the Farm Bill of 2018 and 2014 passed. That was monumental. And now that we have AB 45 awaiting a signature on the governor's desk, that will be monumental. So. I, again, just want to applaud your efforts. Um, I, I think when the, when the history books are written, uh, we will let those um, in, in, in you know, decades and uh, you know, hundreds of years from now look back on this type of legislation, what we did to right the ultimate wrong from 1937 and the Marijuana Tax Act. Um, the, this is a wonderful time to be alive. I sometimes stop and remind myself to look back on... Um, where we were 10 years ago, you know, and to where we are right now is um, it, it's, it's unbelievable when we stop and think how far we've come in 10 years with this plant and overcoming the stigma and hearing the stories of uh, just incredible stories of not only how this plant can help people and help people's bodies and health and, um, you know, just overall holistic well-being, but like you said you know, I think a big thing, Patrick, I know a big thing, you know, they talk about the CBD interest, the CBD cannabinoid side being somewhere in the $20 billion range. But like you said, the fiber movement is alive and running. And we are seeing um, people that are growing for fiber, 
We're seeing people that are making more products like Larry Servin of Hemp Traders. And we've seen people like, you know, Tony that had the, the awesome, you know, hemp field days up there, you know, hemp biochar, you know, hemp wood building materials. Just, I was on a, in, a, in a room uh, talking about that. I mean, and we're moving forward in, even faster than I thought we would. So, like you said, getting these foundational, you know, just groundwork laid so we can, we can proceed and industries can invest. And, and investors can invest in, in taking this plant to the next step, which is cleaning up the environment, which is doing good for the air, for the soil, replacing all of the oil and the, all of the, the, the crap and the pesticides and the junk that we've done as man and, and just doing it right. And we, as, as we've quoted many times on this show, you know, as Jack Herrera said, and the emperor wears no clothes, hemp may not save the world, but it's the only thing that can. So I just want to thank you for coming on, Patrick. And Thank you for all you've done. Any final words before we wrap this baby up? Well, I just want to give one last shout out to to uh, Will Clyden at Ojai Energetics. He was on the ground floor when we started uh, the California Hemp Council. He's responsible for br- bringing Politico, our lobbying firm, in, and Eddie Bernacchi, who is one of the most dedicated, hardworking lobbyists that I've worked in in, in California over the past 16 years. I've, I've spent a lot of time up there and he has taken the, the, the flag and run with it and is so committed in the face of us, you know, the funds weren't always there. They, you know, they haven't always been there, but we've carried on um, because it ain't about the money. You're right, Justin. It ain't about the money. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about all of us and it's about the planet and we'll, together, together we're gonna start really addressing the major concerns that we are facing on this planet with climate change and you know the need the great great need for carbon sequestration let's Absolutely. take let's 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 continue to do the good work justin let's continue to keep our sleeves rolled up let's continue to to battle the naysayers but most importantly we must retreat we must rest we must, we must galvanize our inner strength to carry on because it ain't easy. I have, I have spent so many um, struggling days and nights on, 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 on the challenges of, of the, the issues, the controversies, the, the, the solutions or the problems that need solutions inside of these legislation and inside of the workings of the industry and the markets. And, uh, I, you know, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm relieved, I'm grateful, I'm resting up, rearing up, and getting ready to go come, what, a month from now? Let's, let's go kick some ass. The, the, uh, the bill, once signed, will go into immediate effect. There'll be a runway for folks to get registered and licensed with CDPH, but that FAQ upon signature is dust in the wind. I love it, baby. Love it. Well, I would add one more thing to do while we're resting up and recuperating because there will be more fights and there will be more hardship. But right now, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. This this was a long road and um, the good guys came on top on this one. We, you know, it's, you know, you can lose the battle, but win the war. And we're continuing that this time we won the battle and we're going to keep winning battles that we have to win to win the war. And, uh, just uh, again, so happy that you're able to join us this morning, Patrick. And uh, thank you, everybody that came on and, and listened uh, here live on Clubhouse at 10 a.m. Saturday morning specific for the Miracle Plant podcast. And for those of you that are listening, uh, if you want to uh, ask more questions, um, you can send me an email at jbenton at 101cbd.org. Or you can send Patrick an email at where should they send a, uh, an email to you, Patrick, if they have a question. P.D. Goggin, G-O-G-G-I-N, law at gmail.com. And Justin, hey, thank you. You've been, you've been on the road. You, you, you are so committed. You, like, we got to know each other because you kept showing up at, a, at events and would keep getting in my face. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? He keeps getting in my face. I got to know him because he, this guy's committed. And so thank you. Thank you for your work, your dedication, and everything you do. I appreciate you a lot. Well, uh, I appreciate that, and you're, you're uh, so kind to say. And I'm glad that we met. Obviously, it was, it was meant to be because uh, there's a, a lot of work that we've done. 
there's a lot more work to do. But again, uh, today uh, and this time is a time for <laughs> celebration and exhalation and relaxation. And uh, I just uh, I'm so excited and happy that we got this baby uh, uh, across the finish line with the signature of Newsom. And uh, well, know, a signature on the way. Yeah, signature on the way, baby. He just needs to get the old pen out and give the old John Hancock to it. And uh, I, I'm sure he, he's got his hands full right now, as we know. But, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, we'll, he'll squeeze one in there. He'll get that signature in there for us. So just uh, so excited, man. So happy. So, well, I, I look forward to a celebratory round on the course with you, brother. We'll do it real soon. Real right. soon. Out here in California, we can play 12 months out of the year. And you know me. Find me an ocean course, and I'll be there. So, so happy again all the work you've done for joining us today. And I want to thank everybody. And at the end of every show on the Miracle Plant Podcast, we unmute our mics, we count to three, and we say, heal the world, because the world needs healing. And that's what we're doing here. So on the count of three, everybody, let's say, heal the world. One, two, three. Heal the heal world. world. All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see you next week on the Miracle Plant Podcast. Take care. Bye. Bye.